All right, let's move on to the Way of Mercy Monk now. The Way of Mercy Monk is pretty interesting. Starting at third level, Implements of Mercy. You gain proficiency in the Insight or Medicine skill, your choice, and you gain proficiency with the Herbalism kit and the Poisoner's kit. Just some extra skill and tool proficiencies there. Could be interesting, could be not, depending on your game. That's not really what we're, what we're focusing on here. So let's move on to uh, Hands of Healing. Also at third level, you get Hands of Healing. Your Mystical Touch can mend wounds. As an action, you can spend one key point to touch a creature and restore a number of hit points equal to a roll of your Martial Arts die plus your Wisdom modifier. Also, when you use your Flurry of Blows, you can replace one of the unarmed strikes with a use of this feature without spending its key cost. So this ability is really good. 1d4 or 1d6 probably healing plus your wisdom modifier which is probably going to be you know three to five that's not a ton of healing for one key point but what i'm most interested in here is the 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 second clause right when you use your flurry of blows you can replace one of the unarmed strikes with a use of this feature without spending its key cost which means that if you are a monk which you are and you are in melee which you're probably going to be and you are fighting an enemy and you use Flurry of Blows, which you're probably going to do. You could still make your standard amount of attacks that you would without spending any key, right? So you could, let's say your fifth level, attack twice as your action, bonus action, Flurry of Blows, attack once, that's still three attacks, and then you get to heal yourself as well. All for one key point and as a bonus action, because normally, Hands of Healing is as an action. It normally costs an action to do, but you can heal yourself as a bonus action while still getting the normal number of attacks, which is great, right? It's not a ton of healing. You know, 1d6 plus 4 isn't a ton of healing, but it is nice because it starts to build up over a, uh, over a few turns. So I, I think this feature is, is pretty good. I really do like Hands of Healing, not so much for healing your allies, but for healing yourself. Is a much better use of your key than the uh, the key healing feature, which was added in the uh, optional class features on Earth Arcana a few months ago. That, I believe, was spend two key points to heal yourself for just a roll of your martial arts die. Right? No modifier. So this is half the key, and you get your modifier on top of it, and you can still make your normal number of attacks. Also at third level, holy crap, we have Hands of Harm. You use your key to inflict wounds. When you hit a creature with an unarmed strike, you can spend one key point to deal extra necrotic damage equal to one roll of your martial arts die. If the creature is incapacitated or poisoned, the creature instead takes necrotic damage equal to three rolls of your martial arts die instead. You can use this feature only once on each of your turns. So normally, spending one key point to deal an extra 1d6 necrotic damage, not that great. Right? Instead, I could spend one key point to make two extra attacks and deal way more damage. That's not really what this is for. What this abilities really for is this clause here. All this here. This is the good stuff. If the creature is incapacitated or poisoned, it does triple damage. So how do you get them incapacitated or poisoned? Well, poison comes a little bit later. Incapacitated, though, the standard monk can incapacitate a creature very easily. Stunning strike. The stunned condition incapacitates the creature. So if you stunning strike on your first hit and they fail their saving throw, they are incapacitated and you will be able to do triple damage uh, with this Hands of Harm for one key point. So it does kind of cost one additional key point to set up with the Stunning Strike, but let's be real, you're a monk, you were going to Stunning Strike the enemy anyway, so I think this ability is also very good. Being able to get that three rolls of your Martial Arts die, extra necrotic damage once per turn, that's a lot of damage. So all in all, at third level, the Way of Mercy Monk gets a lot of stuff, and all of it's pretty good. Uh, hands of Healing and Hands of Harm, that combination, you can heal yourself, you can deal extra necrotic damage to the enemy. Even if they can't be stunned, an ally can still incapacitate them in a different way, like a hold person or something to paralyze them. Or, they can be poisoned for this effect, which uh, comes with the next feature, Noxious Aura, at 6th level. As a bonus action, you can spend one key point to turn your key into a Aura of Toxic Miasma. The aura extends 5 feet from you in every direction, but not through total cover. It lasts for 1 minute until you're incapacitated or you dismiss it. While your aura is active, ranged attacks have disadvantage against you. Not that important. You're a monk. You can catch arrows anyway. 
it only takes like a session or two of you being shot before the uh, for the DMs like right not shooting him again. So that's not really a big deal. But this does work against magical ranged attacks. Just as ranged attacks, not ranged weapon attacks, ranged attacks. So a fire bolt cantrip or something like that from an enemy mage will have disadvantage against you, uh, which is quite nice. I think that's a that's a good addition. Any other creature that starts its turn in the aura must succeed on a constitution saving throw or become poisoned until the end of your next turn and take poison damage equal to your wisdom modifier. When you walk up to a creature and you do all of your attacks, when it comes to that creature's turn, they have to make a con save. If they fail, they become poisoned, which means they have disadvantage against you, and they take a little bit of poison damage, you know, three to five probably. And that poison condition also is another way to turn on Hands of Harm. So this Noxious Aura is a very interesting ability. I don't believe the monk had any sort of ability like this before. This is sort of like at the beginning of combat as a bonus action, you can like turn on this one minute aura that will benefit you for the rest of the combat, essentially. Yeah, it's very interesting. I really do like it. I think it's a pretty powerful ability. Giving all ranged attacks disadvantage against you is uh, quite nice, quite a good addition. And of course, being able to poison creatures for your hands of harm and also just giving them disadvantage is quite nice as well. And they could, if they keep failing their, uh, their con saving throws, be poisoned, you know, every single round. Now the poisoned condition, a lot of things are immune to it. Like almost all undead, I think, are immune to poison. A lot of elementals are immune to poison, things like that. So there are a lot of things that are immune to poison damage and the poison condition. But for those things, you have your stunning strike. And this aura still isn't bad, right? Uh, it still gives you the, the range attack disadvantage. So even if you are fighting a bunch of undead, those skeleton archers in the back are going to have even a tougher time of hitting you just with this aura active. Let's move on to the 11th level, healing technique. Your skill in manipulating your key to heal increases. When you restore hit points to a creature using your hands of healing, you can also end one disease or a condition from the following list affecting the target. Blinded, deafened, paralyzed, or poisoned. So this is a pretty... Uh, interesting ability. You can end an effect on a, a friendly creature, including yourself. So if you yourself are blinded or poisoned or deafened, you can heal yourself and end that effect. If an ally is paralyzed, blinded, deafened, poisoned, you can end that effect on them with a heal or one disease. Being able to end the paralyzed condition is very powerful, but it is tempered by the fact that you can't, you know, heal the paralyze on yourself. If Bob the Fighter got hold personed by the by the enemy priest, you can walk over, put a hand on his shoulder, say, it's all right, Bob, and get him out of that paralyzed. Not not a huge ability by any means, but that extra utility is there. You're not exactly a massive power spike, but it just makes you better at what you're already doing, which is healing. And now we get to the 17th level feature, Hand of Mercy. This feature definitely follows the standard monk 17th level power curve, which is uh, being extremely broken. You know, you have all these other 17th level monk abilities that are uh, extremely, extremely overpowered. Quivering Palm being one of them. Uh, and now we have uh, another one. So this is a lot to read. I'm going to kind of just give you the most important bits. So as an action, you can touch a creature, expend four key points, and force the creature to make a constitution saving throw. A creature can willingly fail this save. Unless the save succeeds... The creature enters a state of suspended animation for a number of days equal to your monk level or until you end the effect early. No action required. During this time, the creature is paralyzed, has immunity to all damage, and any curse, disease, or poison affecting it is suspended. The creature appears dead to all outward inspection and to spells used to determine the creature's status. You can only have one creature under the effect of this feature at any time. So, that was a lot, but let me give you a few scenarios for the usage of Hand of Mercy, right? Let's go back to Bob the Fighter. Bob the Fighter and your party, he's having a real tough time in this combat. So Bob the Fighter is really hurt, and he is fighting all kinds of things. He's almost completely surrounded, and the boss is about to, you know, he's powering up a spell against Bob to finish him off. Bob's having a real tough time of it, and you know, right, you're 17th level. You're at the level where if Bob goes down, these enemies are going to, you know, step on his head and finish him off and kill him. And then drag away the body. And Bob could be gone forever. So what do you do? Well, you walk over and you put a hand on Bob and you say, Bob, go to sleep. And Bob goes to sleep. And Bob is immune to all damage until you say so. Right? So Bob is on the ground. He appears dead. 
So the enemies that were killing Bob should come after you or someone else, right? All the enemies that were attacking Bob, you know, they see, okay, Bob's dead. He appears dead. Spells say he's dead. Bob's dead. Let's go attack someone else. Let's go attack the monk, you know? Let's go attack the wizard. Let's go attack the, the cleric. Whatever. All those enemies on their turn leave, and since this is no action required to wake them up, as soon as all those enemies walk away, you know, right before Bob's turn, you say, hey, Bob, you're awake again. Bob comes back up, he gets his turn, he second wins to get some health back, he charges in behind one of the enemies that went for the cleric, stabs it in the back, kills it, suddenly Bob is safe, the cleric can pass him a heal because now Bob ran into range, stupid Bob ran out of range of the cleric, damn it Bob, and now Bob's fine. And if all the enemies come back to Bob and try to do it again, you can do it again, it only costs four key points. If they all go and surround the cleric, you can do it to the cleric. Say, hey, Cleric, go to sleep for a round. Cleric goes to sleep for a round. All the enemies leave him. You know, chase after you. And you're a monk. They can't catch you. They're all chasing after you. You wake the Cleric back up. No action required. Hey, Cleric, it's about your turn. Wake up. All the enemies left you. And if they don't leave, for instance, if the if the DM gets wise to your wily ways and decides they're going to sit there and wait for, you know, Fighter Bob to wake back up, uh, that's fine. They can't do anything to Bob. They're just spending all of their turns sitting there waiting doing nothing. You know, of course, that is kind of uh, against the spell because the creature does appear dead and, you know, to spells and all outward inspection and everything like that. But, you know, for the purposes of argument, if the if the monsters stick around Bob and wait for him to wake back up, you just don't have to wake Bob back up. And they're all wasting their turns waiting there for Bob to wake back up. You clean up every other monster and then go over there, kill all of them. Then you wake Bob up after the combat ends. Hey, Bob, good job. You're a really good distraction. Okay, how about Another scenario, what if you use this offensively? Let's say you are fighting the big bad, and the big bad has, obviously, a few lieutenants. Let's say he has two lieutenants. One is a, a fighter type, and another is a, a wizard type, right? So you're, you're fighting the big bad and his two lieutenants, and you know for certain that this big bad, he's obviously going to have legendary resistance. There's no point in me expending four key points to try to, to try to put him in a state of suspended animation because he's just going to legendary resistance it if he doesn't just you know make the saving throw and that fighter type lieutenant he probably has a really high con you know these lieutenants probably don't have legendary resistance because they're not meant to be that tough but he probably has a you know decent con being you know a fighter type but this wizard over here he probably doesn't have the best con and he probably doesn't have legendary resistance so let's just go see if this works and so you go over and you tap the wizard lieutenant on the shoulder and you say go to sleep and he makes his con save and he fails well, that wizard now goes to sleep. You just took out one lieutenant of the boss fight with one action, with one saving throw. That guy's gone. There's no waking him up. Sure, he's immune to all damage, but without that one lieutenant, without that one extra guy, the boss fight has been made significantly easier. And after you, you know, wipe up the fighter lieutenant and wipe up the, uh, the big bad, you can just turn around, everyone surrounds the, uh, the wizard lieutenant, and Monk wakes him up, everyone strikes at once. Or you don't even have to wake him up that right then. You could just drag his body away and put him in some prison cell. Take away his spell book, take away his magical focus, put a gag in his mouth, tie his hands. It's not any damage, right? That's immediately to all damage. Putting a gag in his mouth doesn't cause damage. Tying his, tying, you know, tying his hands together doesn't cause damage. Taking away his special necklace doesn't cause any damage. You take away all his spellcasting needs. You put him in a jail cell. When he wakes up, you know, in 17 days or whenever you choose, he's fucked. Just like that. So uh, this Hand of Mercy ability, I guess, in, to, to summarize, is uh, ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. It's absurd. I like it. I like how you can get really creative with it and do some really interesting things, but it is just too powerful. It honest, it is just too powerful. So in total, the uh, the Way of Mercy monk is powerful. It's very powerful. I know they're trying to make like a healing monk in lieu of the uh, Way of Tranquility that they came out with you know a long time ago in Unearth Arcana. This isn't as powerful in the healing sense as the uh, as the way of tranquility right it still has some really good offensive options with some good supporty healing options uh everything i think is completely fine and maybe not balanced but you know it's definitely on the higher end of the balance from 11th level down until you get to to 17th level hand of mercy it, it's just ridiculous so i don't know how they would they would change this uh nothing really comes to mind immediately on how they would they could tweak this ability to make it less powerful i guess upping the key cost 
is is an option. So if you if you up the key cost to say eight key points, then it's uh, it's a really big gamble to use it against an enemy, and you're more likely going to uh, to use this feature against a uh, an ally rather than using an enemy to completely destroy them All right because we have monks who can use their 17th level ability and like all of their key to just destroy enemies right we already have those archetypes i think hand of mercy should be the really good way to save someone so yeah i guess upping the key cost is the easy way to do it i don't know there's a lot of different things you could do with it i suppose but let me know what you think about the way of mercy monk and next we'll be going over the oath of the watchers paladin